Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Frame five. John Higgins to break. The last time these players met uh, in competition was in last month's uh, Shanghai Masters when uh, O'Sullivan was a 6-1 semi-final winner and went on to win the title. His 22nd world ranking title. Higgins has won 20. A snooker here, but he needs to block the path off the right side cushion. Well, he hasn't even managed that. But um, even if he got the snooker, it was pretty straightforward for Ronnie just to come off the side cushion and nestle in the pack. So all that. Take the camera away, please. Last shot did was just to clear the black spot area. And perhaps just talking to someone in the crowd to uh, take his camera away. Last thing you want is a flash in your eye as you're about to take a shot. A little bit of a stalemate at the moment because of the red up next to the green. John would like to knock that back up the table. It's a little bit awkward bridging to guarantee to play a good one but it will bring the game back to normality he's looked at the red but it is a bit awkward so take a few shots to just resolve this That's touching book. in fact we might even have a, a, a re-rack if they keep playing a similar type shot it was touching you could just shoot the white up the table so that's sorted the problem out using the bunch as a stopper for the red that uh, he had to play with a fair degree of pace to get the necessary backspin into the cue ball to get it back near the ball cushion. Shot that. that seems to have blocked all avenues off back down the table unless he gets a really thin contact no nope, just playing to nestle on the one that's near this back cushion not quite foul and a miss john Higgins. The reason John's putting them back in again, because the shot that Ronnie's playing, if he doesn't judge it correctly, he could leave this red along the cushion. He can change his mind if he wants to play an alternate, which is what he's doing. <laughs> That's a pretty good alternate. That's a gem he's pulled out there.
I was interested to read uh, that John Higgins said just coming into the tournament that it's the first time for ages that he hasn't had some technical issue at the back of his mind. You wouldn't have thought that could be much wrong with his technique, having won the world title twice in three years, but uh, one or two small points were niggling him till recently. Key shot early on in this frame. Keep an eye on the white as well here. One. Very good pot. I uh, wasn't absolutely sure what was going to happen in the cue ball, but he can roll the pink in the middle, and there's a couple of reds available. So this shot, if it disappears, will give himself a great chance. Well played. I mean, in the modern game, it's, it's such a key part of success is the long potting. And these boys are some of the best we've ever had in the game. Eight. see John Higgins' stance there. Clive, it's more of the old traditional way of standing, the way the great Davis brothers, 15. Joe and Fred, stood, and John Pullman and Rex Williams. Whereas a lot of them are square on. John has got the uh, left foot forward. Sixteen. Maybe not quite as far forward as someone like the great Joe Davis. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. He looks very focused, John Higgins. You can see the concentration in his face there. Thirty-eight. Forty four. Forty-five. Well, what sort of angle has he got on the pink? He should be okay, yet. Yeah. Might just nudge that other red. Fifty-nine. 
51. Starting to close in on a 3-2 lead. Fifty-two needs to pull up just about still on the pink. Wanted to be straighter though, and then he could just have potted the pink and screwed back for the red to the left of it. Not quite got the angle now. And he'd be a bit reluctant to have to play a little cannon, but he might have to do that. And it's gone slightly wrong. That little smile tells you there. He's going to have to get the rest out. It shows the 58. importance of just getting the white absolutely where you want it. Now he's got to try and pot this and develop the pink. He'll be knocking the pink towards the right corner pocket. You've got to be a little bit careful. He doesn't knock the pink in at the same time. Screw. And it's gone wrong. Where's the red going to finish? John Higgins, 58. Well, the pot itself wasn't easy. And decided to screw back off the second ball for blue. Uh, that type of shot One. there, that is where being able to play a left-handed like Ronnie is, it's so useful in that type of shot. Straight away, he's gone into the four reds, and the reason he played that shot, he had the red over the middle pocket, just in case it went slightly wrong, but it didn't. It's perfect. And this would be a Nine. bit of a body blow. John Higgins was a fraction away from clinching this fifth frame. And he's got to just hope that Ronnie can make some sort of mistake here. 16. 17. <clears throat> There's only one slightly awkward red, the one above the pink. Other than that awkward red, the one to the left of the cue ball now, I'm not sure if the green 24. passes the brown. I'm a long way ahead of myself, but he'll, have, he'll already have thought about that, Ronnie. 25. That's tight. He may have to leave the green for the opposite Third. corner, but as I say, that's some... What, eight shots away, but that will be in his mind already. 31. Where 30. the red is situated uh, above the pink, it's far enough away from the cushion to be able to drop in behind it. Thirty-nine. He's the wrong side of the blue, though. He was hoping to leave an angle on the blue, and then I put two whites up either of those positions. He had a red to the middle, red to the corner. It's not on now. He's looking at the pink. And if the red doesn't pass the pink, there's not a lot of value in knocking the blue in. So pink it is. This is the key shot here.
46. Now, if that green, he's looking at the green now. If it doesn't go, he needs a good angle on the yellow after potting the blue. He must feel as if the green passes the brown, the way he's played that. 51. What a steal this would be. As I said, John Higgins was just a fraction away from getting good position and clinching the frame. 56. But these are the sort of players that relish this challenge, don't they? When they know they've got to clear up to pinch a frame, they seem to go into overdrive. 60. Well, he's going to have to travel in and out of the balk area now. Just blue and pink needed. <laughs> 65. Well, is it going to pull up in time? May not. I've done. Just shows you, once again, John was a fraction out, Ronnie was a fraction out with his last positional shot. This is a thin one, and the white's going to be flying around if he takes it on. 20 O'Sullivan, 65. The pot was too thin to take on. Disappointed he would have been not to get better position from the blue. Got the main shot of that, main part of that shot right, keeping the pink safe. He's tried to double the pink, you know, into the corner pocket. He tried to get a good cue ball, but he actually tried a double into a corner pocket from that angle. He did give plenty of concentration as well, though, to get the cue ball close to the black cushion. Shot from Higgins. What a tense frame after the mid session interval. 58 from John Higgins, 65 from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Pink ball fight. Advantage, John Higgins for that shot. Yes, a basic shot for a player of his calibre. One and a half times across. This is tough to get safe. You've got to be so precise with this. That's what he played. And you can't be more preciser than that. You don't often see that. The crowd have suddenly realised what he played there. Yes, yeah, a full ball ricochet. 65. <laughs> He's left what we call a cocked hat double depending on whether Ronnie has a go at the pink could go into the right middle pocket. Six. And the, the top hat double. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie 
O'Sullivan regains the lead. Of three cushions, perfectly judged. 3 2 to O'Sullivan. Well, possible, please. Thank you. Thank you, frame six. Ronnie O'Sullivan to bed. O'Sullivan rates uh, Higgins as the best uh, tactical player he's ever played, but he himself isn't far behind, if at all. Oh, yes, when this man wants to play safety, he's as good as the best. Oh, he's got away with that. Long way off the pot, but he's been fortunate to leave it safe. A little shake of the head there. <coughs> Such a perfectionist, but... It wasn't a gimme by any means, was it? But O'Sullivan's uh, long potting nowhere near as reliable as it used to be. And although that one, as you said, Dennis, wasn't easy, it's the sort he used to get pretty well every time. This goes up past the pink. It pots this one. Oh, what a kick. What a heavy contact that was. Because look where the white's finished. It's finished in no man's land. Now that is unlucky. You could do without that. Especially after the way he lost the previous frame. He looked odds on to win it. And look at the white, how far that jumped off the bed of the table. One. I hope that's not going to be a big turning point because uh, you don't mind losing a frame, but you, you don't want to lose a frame with that happening to you. Eight. Nine. So once again, he's underscrewed that, but he always had the 16. red in the middle pocket. He had preferred the one in the corner, but you're always leaving yourself a choice of reds in this sort of situation. further across the table. He just got a little bit too much reverse side on that. But if the pink goes, he's okay. It obviously Seven. does. Well, it just depends when the pink is re-spotted as to whether the red to the left of it will go. Got the other one, uh, the loose one, all the time, but uh, 23. I think the one to the left of the pink would be available in a few shots' time. <coughs> 24. But watch this shot here because he's got the red, he'll go into the bunch here because it, 
they're not a good bunch to go into, but he'd be guaranteed the red that he's just going to pop the black past. See, so very clever there. He's opened three or four more reds. Maybe snookered on that. He may have just come back a bit too far. No, I think he's okay. Absolutely perfect. Thirty-two. <clears throat> Thirty-nine. Well, this was the terrible contact that John got. Watch the bite. <coughs> Amazing. Well, he knows that Ronnie still needs quite a few, but he also knows the way Ronnie's playing. He might get them. Forty. And straight away with the uh, pink out of commission. He could have taken the blue, but he hasn't gone far enough. But that was his plan there. <coughs> the blue back on its spot would have been 43. Quite useful there, but he can get back on the black here. 44. Quite some time ago, I mentioned that the red to the left of the pink will be available. 51. It's the last easy potable red. 52. And the blue is there. Okay, he's covered the black, but but if he takes the blue, he's got to come up between the green and the brown. And there is a red. That's to the right of the two reds he could drop on, so he's got to pot the blue, he's got to find the gap here. Just a seven. wee bit short of where he wanted. That was the reason, just a fraction short Sullivan, on the positional 57. side. Yeah, six inches closer, and uh, I very much doubt whether he would have missed that. John might take the double on here because he's 57 behind. If he gets the double, he could get himself back into this frame. If a double was ever a certainty, that one was uh, lying at a suitable angle. Uh, Higgins lost the last frame from 62 nil. Can he win this one from nil 57? Six. Eleven. Well, he wants to be straight on this red. He doesn't want to have to cannon into the black, and well, he's not straight on it. And there's little things like that and fractions that can help to make things go wrong, as it did in the early part of this frame, when John looked like he was going to clinch it with one visit. 
Should be okay, but. Yeah, well played. Well judged. Well. That shot was much better than trying to play a delicate cannon and push the black on. Well, we know the key ball, the red that's up the other end of the table and almost 17. tight in the cushion. The one down near the black spot's not too badly placed, but he could do with the black back on its spot before he pots that. 18. So I think his plan here would be uh, the blue, then the red into the middle and hopefully get the black back on its spot. And he should be able to do that. If he leaves the white where the red is, he can pot the black and get on that red, and then it'll be much easier for John. Twenty-four. Okay. So the key shot is going to be how he gets on that 31. last difficult red. He'd love to have been able to play it up for the blue, but uh, he may have to hold for the black and. Ronnie knows that that red might just be a saviour for him, but we shall see. Had enough angle to play for the blue. 32. Now he's just got to get down between brown and yellow, and as long as he doesn't finish tight on the cushion, he's got the chance. 37. And where's the red going to finish? John Higgins, 37. He needs it to go tight on this cushion. Not just forcing it to get... He could have done with a better angle on that red, and then he wouldn't have had to force it. Big, big turning point in this match. O'Sullivan still 20 in front in the frame that he needs to go to up with three to play. Such a key frame here. 4 2 to Ronnie O'Sullivan. It'll be tough for John. Quite a bit of distance involved there for O'Sullivan's attempt. One. And now the Higgins is probably the last red from distance. The way surely is clear to level the match at 3 all. Five. Seven. Ten. The tension continues here at the Kelvin Hall. What a match we've got here. Fourteen. Nineteen. Pink and black needed.
Yeah, he just finished a little bit short for the red for the right corner. It was a bit of a stretch. Anywhere near the circle, he'd be perfect. Twenty-five. <laughs> O'Sullivan led, fifty-seven to nil. Lost position. Hasn't scored again. Thirty-two. And two scoring visits. John Higgins. Higgins has taken the frame on the black to level the match at three all. Well, there are a few twists and turns in that frame. It looked as if O'Sullivan might uh, win it in a single visit when he was first in with 57. But uh, his positional shot from blue was a little bit short. He just seemed to get a little touch of side on it. Watch the white. You see, he had quite a margin for error. He got too close to the bra and he was intending just to come right between them and the white would have come up past the middle pocket and he would have been perfect. Not quite on that red as he wanted to be. Missed it. Higgins replied with 37. Missed the last red. Forcing it along the board cushion. But uh, O'Sullivan couldn't take advantage. And uh, it was Higgins who got another chance. And Thank uh, you, frame seven. Julie won the frame on the black. John Higgins to break. That's a beauty. He's got John in a spot of bother here. Because just to come off either side cushion is an element of risk with it, just nestling into the bunch because of the loose reds. So that was a first class safety shot. Slightly unorthodox uh, glancing escape, but he, miss. he couldn't roll to it because of the red behind the black. Yeah, he wanted a thin contact, uh, but uh, the way it's turned out, just just watch the shot here. He just wanted to flick the red on the way back, but uh, after the cannon on the brown, he's left that red on for Ronnie. Six. Seven. <clears throat> Fourteen. Fifty. Don't think the red to the back and to the left is available for the right corner, so he arced the cue ball and the one to the left of the pink if it's on, it's very good. But he played that with lots Thank of you. side. Watch the white arc as it goes into the reds. Fifteen. 
23. That's come up a long way short. He'd got quite a mark for error there, but he, he left it short. <clears throat> That's where he wanted it. He can still pot it, but it's more difficult. Yeah, he makes it look so easy, doesn't he? stretch there so the extension is just a little six inch extension which will just keep his body away from the red because he could foul that quite easily with a normal cue oh, oh that kicked what a horrendous Third kick second. okay he's still managed to pot the red but not as nicely on the black as he would have been but let's see if it makes any difference Spotted something on the black there. Forty-four. Forty-five. Slight problem now. He looks a bit straightish on the black. May be able to force it or screw it back, but he is straight as you can see. So he couldn't play for the pack. And if it passes the brown, that's a brilliant shot. If the red passes the brown, that's terrific. 52. <laughs> 53. And this is the shot that could clinch the frame. If he can split the reds. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. 60. Well, we said at the start 61. of the match, Clive, we hoped that both players would play at the top of the game. They're playing pretty well. Yeah, pretty near it. Just the odd mistake here and there to spice it up. There you see it, just one more red needed, and it's going to be a difficult one. 60. It's a thin snick required, it's a shot to nothing, he doesn't have to worry about position. 67 safely in, having come too far for his intended red, which was uh, the right hand red in the bunch. Tony O'Sullivan, 67. 71 in front, 67 on the table. He's expecting that to be 4 3. Foul four in the frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Higgins fails to make the escape and concedes. O'Sullivan is one up with two to play. He leads by four frames to three. Thank you, frame eight, <coughs> Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Very good point, that from uh, John Parrott. 
O'Sullivan's adrenaline needs to be running for him to produce his best. And uh, that's why he's responding to the challenge posed by a fellow all-time great. Finds it difficult to get fully motivated sometime to grind it out against a lesser opposition. But give him, give him a top opponent and a full house and the chances are that he'll play somewhere near his best. Well, there is a full house here to watch this titanic battle. That's quite an attacking safety shot, opening the reds up and making sure he gets a good cue ball. Right here at the Kelvin Hall, and they're absolutely loving this match, uh, and they'll want it to go to a deciding frame. I think sometimes Steve, you know, sitting in the studio there, puts himself down a little bit. Uh, I remember <laughs> one chance, and he always used to win. That you were sat on the seat for the whole of the frame. You used to get yourself ready for the next frame because you knew he wasn't going to miss. that left-handed for no apparent reason but there we are different rules for geniuses picked out but it has to be said he shouldn't have been able to have had his hand on the table that white should have been tight on the cushion Ronnie played that shot left-handed if he hadn't placed the cue ball Ronnie where he intended that shot wouldn't have been available to John Six. it was a very very good pot from him No. Easy Stop ball. Six. Must never miss those at this level. Yeah, you can just see his backhand there a little bit, so he didn't cue that smoothly. Listen, even these great players, uh, they do tend to feel a bit of pressure, and John, the defending champion, in front of his home crowd here, maybe just put a little anxious one in there. He doesn't do it very often, or he hasn't done it in this match many times. Oh, that one. one. As they say, wiped his feet. Have a look at this. Any more pace. It wasn't going in, but now that it has, look at the chance that Ronnie's faced with. Where's the black going? Plenty of room there, Eight. so this is a very good chance for Ronnie O'Sullivan. With a little bit of a kick there. Nine. Mm, if he's straight here, he may have to 16. screw up for the blue. Seventeen. O'Sullivan, 95% pot success rate. He's missed six reds, but no colours. 22. 
23. Well, as you can see, there's just three reds available, and then he's going to have to look for the cannon, but... 30. Well, we know with Ronnie O'Sullivan, there's never really much of a problem when it comes to opening the reds up. 31. 36. Don't think the red to the left of that little bunch is available. 37. And that's a careless one. He's going to have to play for the single red now. He's left himself almost straight on the blue. 32. So this is missable. 42. Well, it's a good pot, but it's not quite the angle he was looking for. I don't know whether he can hold this and just cannon the end red. It's, it would have to be a good shot. He did it quite easily, but he's out of position, and I don't think there's a plant there. 50. A bit unlucky. In fact, he held it too much in the end. So John Higgins is not out of this year's Grand Prix by any means just yet. But he can't afford to make any more mistakes and he needs to get a chance. He's 44 behind. Well, among other things, O'Sullivan was looking for a way to get a red safe, but it's not obvious how he could do that from there. Well, at least he's got two on the cushion safe, so, but he would have loved to have been able to push another one to the cushion. Can't do that. He's got to concentrate and get a good cue ball, and he... He can't really get twice across the table because it's too thin. I think you'd be able to snick off that red and get up the table, wouldn't you? Ronnie O'Sullivan, 50. <laughs> red under the ball cushion. Giving him uh, further insurance against uh, the Higgins clearance. John's going to develop these reds or put them into a potable position. And uh, it looks as if he's, unless he's just going to roll to them, let's have a look. If he doesn't roll to them, he's going to have to get the white in the middle of the table to be safe. But I think it's just rolling up to them. I think he intended to leave uh, O'Sullivan snookered on all reds except those two, hoping that a duel would develop and uh, the two reds would be moved into more possible positions.
Yeah, there might be a shot on. Just looking at this, he might be able to get both these reds up past the black and leave Ronnie in trouble here. That was a bit careless from Ronnie. Oh, that's unlucky. If that white... Well, having said that, there's a red also gone towards the middle, but it's... If it's dead straight, it's an awkward shot, but it was a good idea from John, but it didn't quite work out, but he could have put Ronnie in trouble. This is key pot here. It's not straight. One. That was a calculated risk by John Higgins. The right shot to play, but it just didn't come off for him. And you'd have to fear for the defending champion here, Clive. It looks like it could be all over. And Six. What a terrific match we've had. I thought we might have finished up with a deciding frame. Oh, and we might still do. What a shot to miss. Daniel Sullivan, six. Well, can you believe it? He thought he was in the next round. I mean, that is one of the easiest pots I've ever seen Ronnie miss, and he's missed a few easy ones in his career, but... What a miss that was. One. Well, that's a sitter each in this uh, eighth frame. Just when O'Sullivan seemed to have a clear run to the line. And that wasn't down to pressure, that was down to pure concentration. That's all that was. Ronnie thought it's Eight. all over here. And he just queued across it slightly. Lack of concentration. Meanwhile, surely he's not snooking himself with the pink. He hasn't landed tight on the pink. Can he not get through to pot this red? <coughs> Must be able to. It must be tight, you know, he's almost touching the pink. Now, what is just... If it rolls back, it's fine. If it rolls back, it's fine, Jan has just said. Maybe, maybe at one stage he could see the red and suddenly the, the white's just rocked a little bit and there's not a lot you can do about that. Can he pot it? He could. <laughs> Nine. It was much tighter than he expected it to be, though. But it's still not oh. ideal. Because if he drops the blue in, the reds are not available into the left corner. I'm not sure if one of the two reds goes to the right middle. He may have to force this. And that's what can happen because he didn't get... He worried so much about hitting the pink John there nine. that he overhit the pot eventually and then he had to force that in to get on the next red. <clears throat> but it's all safe. <laughs> But Ronnie, a firm favourite for this frame and match now. The fact that the blue's gone on the side cushion has the chance slipped away for the defending champion. That is very careless from Ronnie O'Sullivan. That is a terrible shot. What was he thinking of there? All he was trying to do was come back up the table, but, uh, well, the mistakes are coming thick and fast now. One. 
Well, I don't know whether that was in part because uh, O'Sullivan was unsettled by missing that very simple red when he had a clear run to the winning line. Well, has John covered for the red with the other red? There's been more mistakes. He has more mistakes in this frame than the rest of the match. But now he can bring the difficult red into play and leave Ronnie in trouble. Yeah, I think Ronnie's still thinking about that easy red he missed. John Higgins, four. Sullivan still 37 in front. a bit unlucky he's got a terrific cue ball but the other red has knocked that one towards the middle pocket it's not, not an easy shot by any means but it is a half chance here if you're in behind the red you couldn't miss it you're in the corner pocket almost in the jaws it's difficult Triangle one to avoid the low value colours. glance at the scoreboard it doesn't really matter which colors he pots here there will be enough on the table it seemed like a heavy contact eight just jumped slightly nine Got to be a little bit careful here because uh, of the situation of the green when it goes back on its spot. <laughs> well, well judged. Twelve. made a mess of it he, he was hoping to be on the green just to knock it in leave an angle on the brown and then disturb the difficult blue he's gonna have to go all the way around the angles and he's got to avoid the blue pink and black to get back around to the brown it's too hard it's much too hard 70 so this turning out to be quite a tense frame. The defending champion still in there. Ronnie should have been in the next round. And from a psychological point of view, Clive, if Ronnie was to lose this frame after missing that 
easiest of reds. Even he would need to get himself up for that deciding frame. And you would have to make John Higgins favourite. John Higgins, 17. the cue ball it's okay very good shot now if he tries to put the brown twice across he's got to be careful he doesn't hit the black he may change his plan of shot here and he did do sent the brown around and look at this for a shot Bit of a bonus to get in behind the black, but look where he put the brown. This is over the pocket, is it? But how does he get to the blue? Well, there's a bit of angle. He could possibly swing it over towards the blue, but you wouldn't think so. He has a terrific shot for Higgins has best possible position on the blue, but it's still not a certainty. And he needs pink and black as well. At least he's got it safe. At least he's got it safe. Ronnie needs to put a good shot in here. These pockets don't give much away down the rails. of playing safe here a little thin one and leave the blue on the ball cushion or double it back up the table past the pink he hasn't hit it well that's not a good shot that's a poor shot maybe the thin shot off the blue would have been better this blue effectively then for the match his fellow Glaswegians because they're now expecting him to level the match at 4 all. What a test it's going to be of Ronnie O'Sullivan's character. Can he get himself up for a deciding frame after what has happened here? 11. to clinch the match. He had another chance from distance on the blue, but it's Higgins who levels the match at four all and takes it into a ninth frame decider. Quietly, please.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The final frame. John Higgins to break. For the sake of the other table, do not shout out. Thank you. Psychologically, Higgins has uh, the upper hand. He'll be benefiting from what I call reprieve man syndrome. He would have been assuming that he was about to lose until O'Sullivan, with an easy run to the line, missed an easy red. Now he's got back to four all. And his opponent will find it very difficult to push to the back of his mind the fact that he really should have won by now. Well, Denise is still there, his wife, Josephine's still there, they must be so tense. In fact, I know it's a lot worse watching than it is actually out there playing, believe it or not. It is, isn't it, Denise? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's the pink. That's the pink. Foul. And a miss. John Higgins, six. And if the red goes past the other red. No, it doesn't. But as I mentioned, Todd, I think it'll be a great test of character for Ronnie O'Sullivan this after what happened there in the previous frame. Well, whatever face he puts on it, he's bound to be shaken. And uh, his first attempt at escaping this, from this snooker was a pretty bad one because uh, he got a, a row of four balls to hit. Well, just look at him. He's not comfortable around the table. I mean, it's just the same shot again, but he can't get himself comfortable. So it's going to be fascinating to see what happens. Better. John's family, his mum and Denise being uh, nervous, I'm nervous in the commentary box watching these two fellas. <coughs> now can he see enough of the red? He can. Now what a big test this will be. Got to cue this one perfectly. There's the long pot success rate, 50%. He could do with one here. Doesn't want to hit the brown. And he has. It's a chance for John Higgins. And it's a good chance. Look at the reds around the black. Deciding frame fair bit of pressure on that red but uh, even generally O'Sullivan's long game is not what it was One. about perfect four five more reds available five <laughs> I 
Knew he was always going to be on this red. He's developed a few more. 12. Thirteen. Just come up a little bit short. Slight 20. change of plan here. May have to go for the blue now. As long as he just slips past the red on the side cushion, he'll be okay. Always gone close to the middle pocket. 21. But hitting the jaw has left it ideal. He was actually attempting to stun off the side cushion short at the middle pocket. Got into it uh, too much. Yeah, that was just a little bit of adrenaline. As indeed that was, he's overdone it slightly again. 26. Wanted the white to pull up three or four inches short of where it's finished. Recovery there. Just calling on his vast experience here, John Higgins. O'Sullivan knows that uh, Higgins is fully capable of winning frame and match at this visit. Twenty nine. And that is absolutely perfect. What a key shot that could be, splitting the reds. 30. Now just watch this shot. There was loose reds he could have played for, took the opportunity to open them up. Well, we know what can be missed under these circumstances, but what a chance John has given himself. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Higgins, a pretty reliable clincher of winning positions. A famously cool match player. Well, John himself would have felt when Ronnie was on that red that he missed that he was out of this year's Grand Prix. It shows you what can happen. 46. This is one of the easiest pots you'll ever see, and I think John Parrott maybe got it right. He changed his mind. He could have rolled through for the black, maybe changed his mind on the shot. But that was a sitter. Yes, perhaps a case of confusion in the mind proving fatal. But every credit to John Higgins. As I say, one minute he thought he was out of this year's Grand Prix. 53. And now he looks as cool as you could possibly be. 54. Sign of a true champion, this. A few more pots away, and he's 61. safely in to the next round. And I think Denise, 62, his wife, and Josephine, his mum. They will be absolutely delighted. Yeah, happy times in the Higgins household. 
He deserves it. 70. He was given a reprieve, but he still had to take <clears throat> advantage of it. 77. Seventy-eight. He's played an immaculate deciding frame. Eighty-five. He will be feeling so good 86. inside at what he's just done here in front of his home crowd here in Glasgow. We've seen last year when he won here, Clive, he was absolutely over the moon, but I think this 93. win in this match will give him as much satisfaction as winning the title last year. 94. Oh. 94. Oh. Two all-time greats have given us well done, a great well match. Well done, well done. And Sullivan led 4-3, had a great chance to clinch it, but Higgins took advantage of his reprieve and made a break of 94 in the deciding frame to go through to the quarter-finals, winner by five frames to four. Right as possible, please, thank you.